Well, there we are. <laughs> Yellow. <laughs> first live stream of the first day of the year. It's actually the new year, right? First live stream ever. So there's yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so those of y'all joining us, uh, thank you very much. You've got a couple of newbies here. So <laughs> feel free to let us know if you can see stuff and hear stuff or if there's glitches or whatever. Um, if you think that we're just bad, we're we're actually already aware. <laughs> yes, it's pretty it's pretty dark in here. <laughs> I turned up the lights a little bit, and then uh, not quite enough apparently. Maybe I, I might be able to get a little bit more out of them. Yeah, we can be all right. I see in the chat, um, Robert uh, is joining us again. <laughs> kind of a cool backstory with Robert. He joined us uh, yesterday when we were testing. We accidentally went public. Um, and he popped in and was nice enough to help us troubleshoot <laughs> a little bit. So good to see you, Robert. Thanks for coming back. All right. So it, is it, I guess what we're doing here is we're simulcasting to from my channel to Brent's channel, Haptic Garage. And uh, I think it's working because I had clicked on it. And of course, there's a delay and I couldn't leave it on. I didn't have time to mute it. I was getting off. Uh oh. <laughs> so I had to stop. So <laughs> is it coming through all right over on your end there, Brent? Yeah. Uh, everything looks good to me. Of course, there's the usual delay between what's happening now and what's actually broadcasting. Right. Um, but. Uh, it seems cool. I see uh, Barry in the chat, and uh, my brother Shannon is in the chat. Thanks for the confirmations, y'all. We appreciate that. Um, before we get too deep into this, maybe it would be good to introduce ourselves, because I know we're kind of mixing audiences here, right, with two channels being involved. So Rob, uh, introduce yourself. I'm go. Of course, I'm Brent from Haptic Garage, and as he mentioned, we're simulcasting or multi-streaming to both channels at the same time. So some of that are seeing this are over on Rob's channel. You know who you are. <laughs> and some of y'all are on the Haptic Garage channel. So not only are we new to this, we're trying something a little bit different that we haven't really seen. Uh, I'm, we're not the first ones to think of this, but it, it's cool to give it a shot. Yeah, we're, our goal is to get the chat to work together, which is uh, proved to be very difficult. Um, it can be done. It, uh, we're just trying to do the work around and uh, the way that you would have to do it. Um, I think we can, I think we can get it done eventually though. Somewhere down the road. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of us figuring it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that it's being done. Um, we just, we haven't figured that part out yet, but that's all right because each one of us are watching our chat. So feel free to be very active in the chat on whichever channel that you're watching and uh, we'll keep you involved in and interacting and in, in what's going on in the stream. Yep. Yep. I need to bring up my other notes that I had written some down, but we had some up here. <laughs> I forgot to bring them up. Well, I think we were going to start off with, all right, so why are we doing this? We know now that we are doing it um, and that we're trying to figure this stuff out. Um, I I guess we'd all both speak for ourselves here, but my, my main objective in being a part of a live stream, um, this one being the one we're trying out first here, uh, is to meet you guys. Uh, I want to interact a little bit more. Uh, I think I can speak for both of us a little bit where the the stuff you see on our channels now is there's a lot of editing going into it, and that's great. Uh, definitely want to keep doing that, but uh, I want to learn more about who all of you are, and that has to do something with the, the topic <clears throat> that we're, we're bringing up today. We want to ask everybody, like, what was your first VW? And we'll share our first VW stories too, but that's really my main objective is to... Uh, is to hang out with you all because you're, you're all so cool. I read the comments and in the videos and so on. I'm like, wow, I really like these people. So I'm, I'm hoping to get just a little bit closer to you uh, by being a part of this live stream. And then, of course, there's always the, hey, let's try something new thing, right? So um, that would be my involvement in it. How about you, Rob? What's your, your main goal here? I totally agree. Um, you know, I will, I read every single comment that comes through. And of course the channel is not a very big channel, so it's a little easier to do. And I know down the road, it's going to be harder to do that, but I read every single one and I try to reply to every single one. And uh, I, I, we don't get a ton of comment traffic on our channel. I'd like it to be more. I like it, I like it to be kind of like a, a group thing where we can all kind of hang out and, talk and that's why i really like the idea of the stream that way we can all just kind of get in here and chat and talk about car stuff fab stuff 
You bet. Yeah, sounds like a, a good idea to me. And um, uh, once again, I appreciate everybody that's showing up. This is cool. We got some uh, some interaction going on. Um, I'm looking at the chat now, Rob. I don't, I'm not not sure if you can see what's going on over on your channel there. Um, but I've, I've got a question from Robert. He's asking if both of us are in Florida. Um, for Speaking for myself, yeah, uh, I'm in central Florida. Yep. I'm uh, central Florida, but the other side of the state. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. You are kind of on the West Coast, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm Rob and I have the water. There you go. Oh, yeah, that is West Coast. Um, Rob and I hang out at car shows <laughs> and online, as you can see. But we're not like next door neighbors. But we are both uh, both in Florida. So, yeah, thanks for the question, Robert. Uh, anybody to, has any other questions feel free to throw them in we'd, we'd be happy to answer I'm trying to get a little bit brighter in here a couple of guys are saying that it's dark and it it is mm -hmm. and uh, being that i can't see little words on the computer i have to wear glasses and then i get a glare and now this mic is blocking the light this is going to be a work in progress <laughs> we'll figure yeah. it out though a little bit of trimming uh along the way yep yep so Are you waiting on me? No. Well, yeah, I was reading. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what we're what we're going to move into here is a bit of a car talk discussion of um, oh, we got somebody from the UK. Hey, uh, Carmad ninety two, good to see you. Um, what was your first VW? So each Rob and I are each going to share our our version of that story. Um, feel free to pop that into the chat and maybe something else about the situation that you wish to share, like first VW was such and such and I was 16 when I got it or had to pull this one from a field or it was a hand-me-down, like a family heirloom car or something like that. Um, those are always, always cool stories. So easy, easy topic for us to start off with today. Um, really, I like to flip the script. On this one a little bit, I like to say that every, you know, like people say that every person has a VW story, particularly in Rob and I's age group, uh, when they were much more plentiful a couple dec decades ago. So everybody's got some kind of a VW story, but I like to say that every VW has a person story. I would hope that that's true. Um, it's a little bit esoteric, but what I mean by that is when you have your VW, you want to be that person, right? You want to be the person story. For that VW. You're the one that saved it or kept it running for so many miles or or whatever, right? But we're kind of running down that road here. Of what was the first VW? Anything to add to that, Rob? Yeah, I was just reading uh, Matthew Childers. He just popped in. He had a 73 Baja bug eye, which, uh, <laughs> of course, you're a, you're a Baja guy, and yeah. I'm going to soon be a bug eye. Not a bug eye, but a Baja guy without it's not gonna have the bug eyes but uh that project uh, i've been talking about it for a year behind the scenes but that's gonna happen uh we paid 600 bucks for it running and driving 16 years old that's pretty cool very cool yeah did you say a 73 73 70 yeah that would be cool and um i i like the bug eyes like if i had a baja kit on the front of a baja dweezil's not going to end up with that that's the project that i'll talk about a little later but um, if I was going to pick a Baja kit to put on the front, I, the bug guy is my favorite. Just the bug guy, not like the, the all four <laughs> that you see sometimes. Those are cool, too. But yeah, I, I think guy. for me, for me, I just like, you know, I'm a fabricator. So uh, in my vision of a Baja, it's a little more modern, a little more class five unlimited Baja stuff where you'd have like your tubing coming up and your basically your lights mounted to all that. So it just kind of. You like that? I like that stock hood look, you know, mm -hmm. with uh, kind of some more modern lights, I guess. You know, a lot of people like the old stuff. They're the purists who, who you know, like the traditional Baja, but I just, oh, I'm going to build something a little more modern. So that's going to be sweet. I look forward to seeing it. You're going to uh, do videos all along the way, right? That's the plan. <laughs> a little pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you oh. what, a 73 Baja is way better than my first car, which was a 1979. Pinto wagon panel. <laughs> the the panel part was cool, but it was still a 79 board Pinto. Hey, it's a piece of history. No, no yeah. shame in that. <laughs> um, I want to reach out to Tom here. You're welcome, buddy. Uh, great to have you here with us. Tom's from uh, Cincinnati and uh, 
uh, looking to tackle a 1600 rebuild. So very cool. And uh, VW Nut 1967 is with us, everyone. That's pretty hey. cool. Good to have you, buddy. Um, if y'all haven't checked out his channel, he puts up a whole ton of, of cool videos on the VW Nut 1967 channel. So be sure to check him out. There's a bunch of great channels. I try to keep up with most of them, but, uh, you know, busy lives and we just can't watch every video. But uh, I've watched a, a few of his. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> Uh, Robert says, uh, going to look out for us uh, at Bully Brigade, I assume, um, Rare and Unique, and Bug Jam. So, yeah, come up and say hi. See either one of us. Uh, that's always to, to meet up. Yeah, that's one show I have not been to, and uh, I definitely plan on going. I think uh, last year was kind of a mess, so we'll <laughs> try again this year. <laughs> yeah, if we have time, we might venture into that topic a little bit uh, today, too. Uh, but I have a, uh, a first VW entry here. Uh, Big E Studios uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, says uh, first VW was in 85. It was a 65 Beetle. So for context, it would have just been 20 years old, right? So not really old, old, old uh, at that point. But a sweet Beetle, nonetheless, got it for $850. And the rest is history, he says. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. That'd be a great start. Uh, VW Nut says, oh, it scrolled on me. VW Nut says a 74 Super uh, and had a Hendrix sticker on the fender. <laughs> Is, the name of that Beetle uh, was, of course, Jimmy. <laughs> so a 74 Super Beetle named Jimmy with a Jimi Hendrix sticker on the fender. That's pretty cool, too. <laughs> Thanks for um, popping all these into the chat. This is an awesome response, everybody. It's, it's pretty cool hearing about uh, all your, your first cars. If there's anything else you want to add, feel free to to pop it in there. Uh, what you got, Rob? Uh-oh, may have lost Rob. Uh-oh. <clears throat> uh, VW Nut says, happy to be here. It's good to have you. Uh, so Barry says, uh, bought my daughter a 72 in 99, 1999 for school and had a 70 vert and a thing Got the 72 back when uh, his daughter needed an air-conditioned car for work. No longer have the thing or the vert uh, in Fort Lauderdale. So you're close, uh, Barry. But yeah, so you've had a, a few VWs. I was thinking about this a little bit earlier today. I've actually had four. Uh, if you've been around the channel at all, um, the bus is the big topic with Project Vandemic. But that's actually the fourth VW in my history. So maybe we'll get to that uh, at, at some point. Okay, I got your chat up and running so I can see your chat now. Oh, very cool. I've got your, your audio again. Yeah, I that was me. <laughs> I, hit the, I hit the mute button. No I didn't want to get all that delay from yours. Um, I think what happened on, on my channel is when we went live, it went to a different stream because I just noticed the title's different. So that's something we'll have to work on on our end. But yeah. So yeah, I was going to say... My first Volkswagen was a Beetle. It was a 1976 with fuel injection, and it wasn't a Super Beetle, just regular Beetle, which was a little bit more rare, you know, the later ones here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and, uh, man, that thing, it, I did a lot to it. It was, uh, you know, at the time, it, cow look was pretty pretty cool, so I did a lot of cow look stuff, one-piece windows and all that, and then uh, suicide doors with hidden hinges, which to me was my favorite thing. <laughs> had the remote so I could you fab those in. What's that? You fab those in. That was before I was a a, a, a fabricator, so I, I had a hot rod shop do them actually. Oh wow! So, All right. Yeah, I wasn't. Well, you I knew wasn't what you wanted. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a little remote to pop the door open when I walked out. You know, from the Seven Eleven or whatever. It was kind of cool. <laughs> that would have been super cool. <laughs> and I had it. I had it lowered the wrong way which uh, oh, Ryan right. would cringe if he's seen the way I did it, you know, pulling springs and basically just setting it down on the, the bump stops. It was terrible, <laughs> terrible ride. I imagine it, it probably was, but that's, you know, that's one way to do it. <laughs> hey, when you're, when you're young and don't have any money, you do what you can. That's true. You want that look. Might, might oh, yeah. just be compelled to do whatever it takes to get it. <laughs> I think of that as my first car, but you know, I think what got me into the Volkswagen was when I was 
you know, a, a kid, my mom had one. She bought it brand new. So I remember riding in the back little area behind the seat as a kid, you know, mm -hmm. before we had to wear seat belts, I guess, before it was unsafe. <laughs> right. <laughs> now yeah. it's unsafe. There was a period where we didn't really pay much attention to seat belts, wasn't there? Yeah. Riding in the back of a truck, back of a bug, eh. mm -hmm. didn't matter. Now, it, it, so you said you had a 76. That was pretty late in the run, right? As far as United States VW, air-cooled VWs are concerned, I think pretty much everything wound down in 79. Um, it's yeah. my impression, and, and maybe somebody has a better idea about this than I do, that that was kind of the jump the shark era for, <laughs> for air-cooled VWs where they were they were doing all kinds of variants like um what was it called the super b and of course there was the super beetle itself and sunbugs and um all kinds of different things just trying to keep the uh the franchise alive so to speak so there's there's some pretty cool unique uh factory variants in in that time yeah i think for me what i hated the most was those big giant tail lights in the the turn signals on the front they were just ridiculous and i think in the big they had those big um the shocks for the bumpers they were the hole was about that big you know it just I, I think that was the era where you know all the regulations started kicking in and uh yeah like you said I th i'm pretty sure and i'm not positive some expert will probably chime in but it seems like after 76 they kind of were just a lot of convertibles and super beetles, not many regular beetles back then. Yeah, the, all those different versions, I guess, got kind of popular. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a cool one from V Dub Den. Uh, he had a '64 Beetle that was in his family since new. Took his road test in it, and it was his first car. <laughs> Uh, and he kept it and used it for work and school for six years after getting his license. So that's like a real first car. That's not like an in and out. Right. So that's, right. that's pretty cool. Pretty cool way to get started on the road as a, I guess about a 16 year old or so. Yeah. VW nut 1967 agrees with me. The big bumpers and lights, they kill it. It's just the, mm -hmm. it's one of the first things are anymore once once you get to the big square stuff it's it's yeah. own and it's fine but it's not the like he's got a really sweet 64 as well both of his beetles are have that classic look and pretty cool i might be looking at a new beetle not a new beetle but a beetle new to me this weekend and i believe it's a 63 or 64 maybe i'm not supposed to be talking about this project yet yeah i <laughs> might want to have it in hand first <laughs> right <laughs> No, hopefully, I don't know what Ryan's doing, but hopefully he can go with me to help take a look at it because he's uh, pretty knowledgeable and knows a bit about him. So that'd be cool. Yeah, always cool to, to grab a new project. Yeah, I, I feel like the, the most exciting parts of a project are the beginning and the end. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot that happens in between, but those are both wildly exciting phases of the project. When you're diving in, and when you're wrapping it up. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we were talking yesterday about, you know, tearing them apart. That's pretty easy to tear them down to nothing. But when you go to go back together, just for me, I can't just put a rusty brake line on or, you know, anything that doesn't look brand new or I know is going to work like it's new. So it just makes that project just stretch out so much longer, so much longer. Yeah. Yeah. But it takes a lot longer to put them back together than it does to take them apart. But if your expectations are adjusted for that, then all, it's all good. It's it's all part of the fun. But yeah, you, it's hard to put something back on um, that isn't <clears throat> worth your your time and your opportunity. Right. Once you put that on, you're going to put something on on top of it. And now it's harder to get to. So you might as well put um, a fresh brake line to use your example back on instead of a rusty one. Sometimes the budget doesn't allow it, but you know, that's always kind of where your head is when you're putting these things back together. <clears throat> yeah. Like, like you said, expectations, uh, last, not last year, the bug jam before that, uh, there was a couple guys that took a bay window bus. They chopped the top completely off of it. I don't know. I don't think you even had floors in it. 
It was no. it was on the video we did on it, and it was just crazy. But yeah. obviously, that one would be easy to uh, put back together when you just <laughs> hack it apart. Yeah, I think they were kind of on their own line of thought. <laughs> that was pretty radical. There wasn't a whole lot left of that bus, but as far as I know, they drove it in there. <laughs> I get well. I I got video of it. It's like a Flintstone mobile, right? Like there's there was no yeah. floor in it whatsoever. Crazy. I don't know if I would drive it on the road, but they did. You see some pretty crazy stuff at at bug shows. Uh, bug jam being so big, you see a lot of crazy stuff. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, Thomas uh, says he's thinking about buying his neighbor's two VW to put together two VWs to put together, um, but they're a little rough. So I guess it's good that you got two of them. So. Uh, Rob, you may not be the only one starting a new project here pretty soon. <laughs> Tom, yeah, it's full, but that sounds like fun. I really need to finish some of the other projects I have. I got, I don't know if I'm going to put it on the channel yet, but I'm finishing up a classic early Bronco and it's going to be pretty nice, but, and I haven't had much time to film on it. So I might, I might do a quick video on it or something. That would, that, that would be cool to see. That was taking all my time. It's a lot. It's a big, I mean, it's a very high end build. Mm -hmm. I mean, top of the line, everything. So eh, it's fun, but it's tedious. Yeah. I guess the higher you aim, the, the more steps there are <laughs> to get through. I, I don't think I I've did. mentioned that before. I mean, you've, you shared this project with me a couple of times. Um, my grandfather had one of those things, and it's like a family heirloom. My cousin has it now, and he's done amazing work with it. But uh, those those old Broncos kind of have a special place. <laughs> they're they're pretty cool. Yeah, uh, when I started, I mean, it was just the same thing. You tear it all down. I tore it down to nothing, uh, just the frame, and the frame was like in great shape. And I had to fix a couple little spots on it, so I. Started with that and just started going, you know, very high end from there. And then, of course, now this has been five years. And it, now getting towards the end, I'm like, well, yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> you know, just kind of it's not that I'm cheating on anything, but it's, you know, you just got to you got to finish the project eventually. So it's yeah, not mine. <laughs> those are tough decisions when you kind of just say, all right, <laughs> I got to get this done in my lifetime if I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, I like to do a lot of, I don't like to really buy parts. I like to build them, you know, so I like to do everything kind of one off and that takes a lot of time. So I'm at the point now, I'm just kind of buying stuff that they already make and using, and it's good stuff. So I'm using that and it's going to, I should be, well, my last goal to have it done was Christmas of, of last year now. <laughs> so hopefully <laughs> maybe I should shoot for Easter or something. We'll see. Yeah, just something doable and don't beat yourself up too much if you don't hit the mark. <laughs> we'll get there. See, uh, Matthew Childers over here said he's starting a 69 bug. That's a good one. That's a great year for a bug. Mine is a 68. And if I could change its year, that's what I think I would choose is 69. Of course, I'm thinking of the IRS uh, in the back. Uh, mm -hmm. Still a ball joint front end. Well, they were ball joint from there on out. But yeah, that IRS was a, a big deal. Maybe not quite as tough as the swing axles were. But um, yeah, that's a great year for a, a Beetle. Um, Barry said he uh, in inherited a, a 72. Oh, I think he was telling us about that. Yeah. The, uh, the <clears throat> one that the daughter had. So inherited the 72. Needs a lot of work. Yeah, they do. <laughs> um vw nut 1967 uh is putting a thumbs up for the cow look he says it'll live on with him forever <laughs> i think you mentioned the cow look uh a little bit earlier uh tom is reminiscing back to those great days when you could buy a beetle for uh for 50 bucks <laughs> and yeah those days are gone but that might segue pretty well into to my first beetle or my first vw story i i paid 300 for for mine it's a 68 beetle um named dweezel if you've been around the channel at all there's uh the beginning of that project which we'll be getting back to this year but i was a dumb college kid when i got it uh mid 40s now <laughs> so i've had dweezel for quite some time uh, at the time i just 
I wanted a car. I did. I wasn't even looking for a VW. That's kind of the crazy thing here is I just, I wanted some kind of a project. I didn't have the budget. I didn't have the time. I didn't have the knowledge or the tools or the place to, to work on such a thing, but I, I, I did it anyway. So I came across this beetle, drug it out of somebody's backyard, <laughs> like Tom mentioned, <laughs> um, 300 bucks and it was mine. Uh, I drove it home about Oh, I don't know, 100 miles or so. Broke down on the way, of course. <laughs> points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got even more points. Uh, I, I got back to where I was going. And I, like I said, I was in college. And so I got back to the little college town I was in and had to show somebody. So I drove over to my friend's place and um, said, you know, I got something to show you. I, I just did something crazy. And of course, he was blown away. This thing was a rust bucket with hacked fenders. Like they did the, the grinder Baja conversion, <laughs> where it's just kind of like hack off the fenders and crank up the, the rear torsion and put truck tires on it. And that was about it um, that they did to prepare it. So he's looking at this rusty heap in the, the parking lot of his apartment. I'm like, let's go for a ride, man. <laughs> so he jumps in and we get started down the road and i was maybe a mile away from his place and i got pulled over <laughs> i was in 50 and a 25 i think it was one of those situations where the road was starting to open up but i was still in the zone and i was going too fast so i got pulled over and the officer was at the window and of course you know i wanted to roll down the window and show him license and um the bill of sale because i had just bought the thing and I couldn't because the window wouldn't roll down. <laughs> so I had to explain to him through the dirty glass of this beetle. Hey, man, uh, I'm going to open the door, but I'm not like about to rush you. <laughs> and he he kind of caught on by that point and he was laughing with me and, you know, got my ticket, but got him an interesting uh, first experience in, in that first car. <laughs> After that, I tore it all apart, and it still hasn't been put back on the road yet. It's a whole lot closer to that than it was. But um, <clears throat> we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, tearing it all the way down to nothing and some of the challenges that that can bring. Well, uh, especially at the time I was that inexperienced kid, I really dug a deep hole for myself <laughs> by tearing the thing all the way apart. But I think over the decades, I've, I've got it under control, and we're going to try and put that thing on the road this year. It, it should be pretty cool. But yeah, 68 Beal, first car. first. How long, how long did you drive it before you tore it apart? Not very long. Uh, I Maybe months um, before I tore it apart. Uh, it would just, you know, of course it had problems, um, and I, I would start to investigate those problems, and then you kind of get that target fixation where you dig a little deeper than maybe you should have. And now you're kind of past the point of no return. Um, and I think where I got to that point was when I pulled the body off, not a big deal on, on a, on a beetle as compared to other cars, but that's where it was like, all right, this thing's going to stay apart until everything, uh, gets done on it. So, ah, eh, maybe six months. That'll be, good <laughs> six months yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's been a long time since that six months or however many months it was uh ended <laughs> yeah yeah but they always go take, they always take way longer so what'd you do for christmas do. just sticking, Asking sticking me. Around town? yeah what'd you do for christmas <laughs> I was with family for Christmas as always. It was, it was great to spend time with, with family and, uh, I hung out a little bit and it was kind of short and sweet, but, uh, it was a good time. How about you? We, uh, went up North to, I'm from Michigan. So we went back up there and got to see some snow for Christmas. First time since probably since I moved to Florida, which was a long time ago. So it was fun. Just kind of took the dogs and, Drove around the snow a bit, and that's a lot of driving. You said Michigan, it was a right? man ton of driving. Yeah, <laughs> are you the type that kind of just starts driving and doesn't stop until you get there, or you split it up a couple of days? Uh, I can do that if I'm by myself, but when you have dogs and family, no. Yeah, I did on the on the way back. I stopped by and saw Marcy Junebug. Yeah, she, very she cool. Works, 
she's working on that uh, the pickle van, which is very cool. But she's got a lot of cool stuff going on there. Yeah, she's like cool channel. If, if y'all haven't heard of her uh, Marcy Junebug, very cool channel. You should check her out for sure. She gave, she gave me these little. She makes these little boxes out of old license plates and stuff. Uh huh. Kind of cool. She's so crafty. She got, like she's really creative, and like not only can she do the the heavy welding of chassis parts and stuff, but she's really crafty and artistic. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking at the, the pickle. I was like, man, that's a, that's a heck of a project to take on. And it, it, it is, but she's like, well, look inside. If you look inside from the inside out, it's a pretty good looking uh, split window. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. as bad as it looks, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It was a, I'd do it, you know? Yeah, she's uh working on. I don't know what she's shown on the her channel, but she's uh got a lot of rust replacement going on and doing a good job. Very cool. Yeah, hey, I'm kind of jealous. You got to see her bus. Yeah, cool project. I like it's like her husband's got a um I forget what year it is. So it's a beetle, but it's a good looking beetle. I don't know why I like it. It's just just another beetle, but it looks good. It's got an air ride on it and stuff. Pretty cool. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Very cool. Um, oh, okay. Carmad 92. Uh, first Beetle is a 69. Were we just talking about that or was that a different 69? Um, but working on her uh, with my dad as a father and son project. Uh, five years into it, still a long ways to go. I hear you. <laughs> Sometimes that, uh, that's how they go. Robert says the last new German beetle he remembers at the dealer he worked at. Oh, he worked at a dealership. There are some stories. Uh, mm -hmm. D7. Yeah, things are kind of winding down then. I think the uh, EPA and the uh, the appetite, the demand for such a car was kind of waning. I'm getting a lot of cars that didn't require quite as much maintenance around then. Uh, v Dub Den says I live in New York State. Right up the road from Chris Valone. Yeah, from Classic VW Works. Yeah, I was watching one of Chris's videos just the other day. He's got some some cool stuff, and it, it appears a pretty busy uh, air-cooled Volkswagen business that he's got going on there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, one more. Got Levi's Backyard. This is uh, um, <laughs> our, our friend from DeLand. You might also know VW Jawbreaker. Those two guys happen to be related. <laughs> uh. he had a 71 super i remember that the dirty marshmallow um but levi says he had a 71 super and he ended up uh talking to my granddad to buy it off my cousin for me <laughs> so ooh, he got somebody to fund the project nice so yep yeah, uh i saw that you had sold it recently there's you know there's other projects that are out there that one might have been a lot to to bite off but it was cool that you got into it and um and if you want to get back into VWs, they'll they'll be there for you. And uh, I know you've got someone really knowledgeable in the household that can can help you out with that if that's something that you want to do. But yeah, yeah. Spe speaking of, uh, I got a notice today that it is Jawbreaker's birthday. How about that? Well, happy birthday, <laughs> VW Jawbreaker. I don't know if he's watching or not, but uh, according to Facebook, it's his birthday. Yeah, very cool. Well, happy on January first. So I wonder, yeah. Gary, was the uh, the first baby born that year? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little news blurbs that you see every year is the first every baby. year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one thing I didn't see this year because I haven't watched any TV really, other than you know on demand, is I always hated it. The end of the year, the year in review stuff. Oh, you don't like that those? No, especially oh, not this year. I didn't, definitely didn't want to watch it this year. Yeah, this year maybe is an off year. But <laughs> did you did you see any? Because I I didn't see any. Some I I've been pretty busy the last week or so, which is when those things really air. So I didn't really watch one beginning to end. But yeah, I saw some of them. You know, the other thing that happens this time of year that's really cool is the Dakar Rally, and I always seem to miss uh, that too. Uh, I like the the big trucks, the Paris to Dakar. It's rally. crazy what those things can do. It's nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. Just nuts. You wouldn't think, well, I mean, who would think to race one of those things, especially off-road? You're talking about the uh, the trucks, I assume. Um, the, yeah, the, I think those... it started as they were support vehicles, but they had uh, yeah. 
and so they might as well just put numbers on them and race them. And now it's its own class. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. If you're going to yeah. be running to keep up anyway. Yeah. A fact check would be good on that one, but that's my Im impression of how that racing class came to be. And it's, it's my favorite. And a lot of times the coverage, you get this much, right? It's all motorcycles, which are awesome, but um, you don't get to see much of the trucks. So I really savor any, any of that coverage that they, they, they uh, provide. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah. you got any more first cars on your end there, Rob? Uh, I don't think so. Nope. Uh, Robert, our unwitting beta, beta tester from yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> says his first car was a 70 Beetle he got in 79. That would have been a good time to get a Beetle. I bet it would have been inexpensive and not in terrible shape, just being nine years old. But, yeah, there was a... I know I shut that up. There was a time when I was into Beetles and Bugs and Volkswagens heavily in the in the uh, early 90s-ish, really. I mean, there was a point that I had, I don't know how many Beetles I had, but between me and my buddy, we had probably 10 or 15 at one time. Oh, wow. You know, they weren't all great, you know, but some of them were decent. And I had uh, two bay windows at the same time. So we had a, I mean, obviously I couldn't do that now. I mean, because it cost you a fortune. You could get a beetle for, you know, five, 600 bucks. Right. It was running. Yeah. Well, my, my story is just another demonstration of that, but yeah, they, I, here's the, here's the real killer. I remember when nobody wanted buses, nobody wanted split window buses. And those were the 50 to a hundred dollar vehicles. It, mm -hmm. like they're, they just their appeal and their charm broke back through or finally broke through i guess in the late 90s i would i would um kind of you know dartboard it i guess but um prior to that those were the ones that people were yanking engines out of to baja their beetle with right and yeah. it's certainly not that way now they're some of the most expensive um vws out there yeah i, I remember That's wanting I remember wanting a split window, um, but the bay windows were, back then were even, you know, they were, of course, cheaper still. Um, mm -hmm. But I, here's a weird thing is I remember like the Vanagon, thinking of a Vanagon back then. I was like, there ain't no way I would have a Vanagon. But now <laughs> <laughs> they're expensive and they're cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I know nothing about them, but they seem cool. And. I haven't seen an owner of a van again. It's like, oh yeah, I've got a van again. No, they love their cars. So there's something there. There's something that's that's really cool that I haven't been exposed to yet. Uh, about well, the, the, van the one that uh, over at Ryan's shop that he built with the hydraulic suspension. Oh yeah, the uh, single cab that's van again. Man, that thing's so nice. Yeah, you were with me um, at Bug Jam when I got that killer deal on the seat. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. 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 So I've got the two thirds section for the for the bus in Project Vandemic. <laughs> Anybody knows where I can get the one third, I'm on the hunt. <laughs> but yeah, he gave me a killer deal on that. And that that single cab was totally sweet and a cool guy too. Yeah, yeah, he's real cool. Maybe somebody will pop in and find you some parts. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. Uh Tom is asking <laughs> this is like this could be a whole uh, live stream here. He's asking, where do you prefer to order parts from? Amazon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have ordered parts from Amazon. Um, I, wherever I can get the, the, the best value, uh, would be my answer. And I would, I would back that up or clarify that by saying not the best price. Um, or the lowest price. I would want. I want the best value, which is that mix of price and quality of the part. Now, the way that plays out, as we all know, with VWs, is usually you're buying the higher price thing uh, to get the better part. So wherever I can do that, um, <clears throat> my short list would be Wolfsburg, Wolfsburg West, CIP one. I think I've bought some early bay stuff from the bus depot uh, as well. But all all the vendors that are pretty well known out there uh they all do pretty well and you know if, if you have in mind what you want and then you find the vendor that offers it 
that that kind of answers the question for me on a case by case basis. I think if uh, if it's sheet metal stuff, you want to spend the money. I know Ryan's working on a project now. It's a it's an oval, and they replaced the whole front, you know, nose under the the hood and all that. Mm -hmm. And it came as one piece. Well, they ended up cutting it completely apart just to make it fit. So mm -hmm. I mean, it would have been better to spend the money and not spend two or three days trying to make the one part fit. Yes, I would agree with that 100%, but only add that be ready to go ahead and cut it apart anyway. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, yep. I was paid up for floor pans on Dweezil, and believe it or not, it's not just one piece. There's, you know, the jack point and the back lip and all that stuff. Both of them, they were high quality. They were thick, the orange ones. Um, and I took them, I, I took all the spot welds out and repositioned everything for my car, for where the holes are in the heater channels and and it to me it was necessary to get those to work but can you imagine doing all that work on inferior sheet metal oh yeah once i had to put all that work into it it's like oh bummer i got all this work to do but at least i'm doing it on a, well here's that word again um a piece of sheet metal that was a good value may not have been the cheapest but it it uh, in the end is it worked out best given the realities of the situation. You don't want to mess around with a piece of sheet metal, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what you did there? That's good. All right. <laughs> yeah, I think some of these uh, older vehicles also. I mean, they've been wrecked and pulled and straightened, and you just never know. You know, and I don't know how consistent they were when they built them new. You know, that'd be interesting to know. Mm-hmm. I, I read a discussion about uh, sheet metal parts that was kind of interesting and eye-opening to me is, you know, there's a die that stamps this stuff. And if you think about that process, it's got to be pretty violent where, you know, the, the die smushes the metal. The metal probably warms up a little bit during the process. There's who knows how many tons of force involved. Then it opens up and you got this part. Okay, so the part goes down the line and the next flat piece of sheet metal gets put into place and you get that stamp again, and that's going to wear out the die. So each part is going to be that much different than the last one. So did you get one from the beginning of the run or the end of the run? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can almost, and, and then you're taking these parts and putting them on a vehicle that's gone down the road and twisted as you hit speed bumps and went over curbs and whatever you were doing <laughs> in the mm -hmm. thing it's actually kind of a stretch to think that even the highest quality sheet metal is going to fit right just because there's so many variables involved. You wonder like uh, some companies will say, yeah, we use factory tooling. <laughs> I thought I turned the ringer off. Yeah. We use factory tooling. So I wonder if, if it's like the old tooling that was wore out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen, and it may not really, register with who they were trying to reach but i've seen a a, a repop manufacturer uh i don't want to guess on who it was but it may be the green panels <laughs> um that they were using all new tooling but somebody making sheet metal so that they are using all new tooling and that's actually really significant if the tooling um is of course you know the right shape to to make the panels yeah it's ex the tooling's expensive that's why some of these parts are so expensive. I've got some catching up to do in the chat, but Barry just said, I always get the one made on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty yeah, good. It seems like it. <laughs> the last 15 minutes of the day on Friday, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I, I used to work at Ford years ago, and uh, <laughs> they took, they took uh, like, one of the, the inner fenders in the rear or something off of a car that got wrecked or something there was a beer can inside of the car <laughs> like they were they when they had put the car together before they welded it together they had put a beer can inside of it oh so, wow that sounds like somebody's last day <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's crazy to think that they're drinking beer at the one of the big three manufacturers <laughs> yeah. i i've got that vintage airstream motor home and i've i've been into the walls of it on numerous occasions and i've found all kinds of things that were all construction debris like heads of rivets and um uh 
wood sha shavings and, and that kind of thing from just the construction process. So they don't always clean them up before they button them up. No, I think they just dump it all in there as they go. They don't care. Yeah, it's covered up. That'll get it out the door. It's not going <laughs> to hurt anything, really. Yeah. Uh, VW Nut 1967. Um, this is me catching up here, but uh, it says it's the little stuff that gets him in the the repair and restoration process, like the screws, the nuts, and the bolts. Yeah, that you know, the right bolt that's the right diameter, the right thread pitch with the right head on it for that. There's just as many details in that, it seems, as getting the right crankshaft. Now, one of them you're going to measure ad nauseum and the other one you're not. But yeah, every little fastener that holds these cars together, you can really um, dive deep with the details involved. Yeah, I have a problem just using regular bolts a lot of times. You know, you want those nice factory bolts with yep. you know, with the flange head on it and all all that. It's just uh, I don't know. It's one of my things. Can't do it. They're different. They're they're a different grade. It's hard to find a good quality factory style boat bolt. You can't just go to Home Depot and get them. Yeah, that hardware grade stuff is uh, like grade two. The, the absolute worst, thankfully, we don't have to mess with this much with what we do, but uh, wood screws. Those things are made out of balsa wood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that That's why they call them wood screws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're different. I've got some stainless bolts. And maybe a lot of us don't think about how strong stainless is. We think it's not going to rust and that's the feature. And, you know, that may be why we get it. But it's going to be somewhere on that scale of, of strength. I think it's somewhere below a grade five. That's, that's my impression of it anyway. But I got some stainless bolts that the, um, the threads galled. I tightened them up once and then I loosened them. I had to put something together and then sometime later had to take it apart. And when I started loosening them, the threads were just wadding up yep. within the threads of the fastener. And I ended up having to cut several of them off. So these are stainless, right? Fancy, right? Um, and they didn't really make it through one complete use cycle. Yeah, you, you really have to, whenever you use stainless, no matter what you use it on, just put a little mm -hmm. anti on them. Because even if you put them into steel, mm -hmm. especially aluminum, but uh, yeah, you'll gall them. I mean, that's it's... What I, that's what I didn't do. And I think if I had it to do over again, I'd definitely follow that advice. Yeah. And even like if in a pinch, you can use like WD-40 that helps, but definitely something, something on there because they will gall. I mean, it's, I don't know why they do it, but they do it. Hmm. Somebody, somebody with more smarts than me can tell me, but I have no <laughs> idea why. I just know how to not do it. Yeah, there you go. That, that's something that I have grown into is I'm a believer in anti-seize now. Oh yeah. What I hate it. <laughs> it's a love hate relationship because you know it's going to be on everything you touch after that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm go probably look at already there. I'm I don't know, maybe you relate, Rob. I'm the type that I can't do anything unless I get it all over me. <laughs> so Yeah. <laughs> if I'm out in the shop, I'm filthy. There's it doesn't matter if any seas is involved or not. <laughs> yeah, I uh I try to stay clean. I don't know. I'm a I'm a wuss, I guess. You know, I, I wear the the rubber gloves and you know, don't like to get dirty, I guess. I don't know. I hear you. What, whatever works for you, right? Oh, yeah. The thing I'm really good about, there's some things I'm not good about, but the thing I'm really good about is hearing protection. There's not much I can do with my in, in my shop where I don't want hearing protection involved. Yeah, that's... I don't have mine here. <clears throat> I usually have them sitting right here. I have those little Bluetooth things you wear around your neck. So I'm always listening to something, but it's great hearing protection that you always have with you. Because all day long, I'll be listening to whatever. And if you're MIG welding, it's a it's another plus. Because if you've ever gotten a little piece of MIG welding slag in your ear, that's scary. <laughs> that's, that is yeah, scary. I've gotten it just about everywhere else, but not in my ear. <laughs> yeah. I had it. I was like a dummy when I first started welding. I was doing MIG welding. I had Converse high tops on. 
and a pretty big piece uh, went through the shoes. And now it's in the shoe, went through the sock. Now it's in my sock. And, you know, you can't get all of that off fast enough. <laughs> oh, no. It's usually, I don't do much MIG welding anymore. It's always TIG. But, mm -hmm. uh, and I wear shorts and I wear whatever shoes. And I don't know how many pairs of socks I've had with the hole in the top. But usually I'm in the middle and I got a great weld going. I'm not stopping. I'm just holding my breath, trying to deal with the pain to finish that weld. <laughs> so, Been it's there. A, I probably have, I'm not wearing shoes. But yeah, I got scars on my feet. From <laughs> welding I learned my lesson. I wear leather boots all the time in the shop. Yeah, I should. <laughs> I was um, in the corner, in the front right corner of the RV. So, you know, this is a big vehicle. Uh, and I was doing some structural welding in there. Something had just totally rusted away. So I'm kind of in there like this, and I have just enough room <laughs> with the MIG gun to tack in that, that part. And I see smoke, and I feel <laughs> heat on my stomach, and I was on fire. My shirt was burning. But I was like this, so I'm just trying to <laughs> put it. <laughs> I couldn't move. I was kind of trapped in there. <laughs> I was trying to put out the, the fire <laughs> right there. And I, I eventually got it, but it wasn't graceful. <laughs> I, I've caught on fire. I was grinding something once and the the, the, the sparks were going right to my jeans. Must have been wintertime because I was wearing jeans. And uh, I started feeling like it was getting warm. I'm like, what's going on? And then uh, I started smelling smoke. And I looked down, my whole pants are on fire. <laughs> so, so that, Robert says legs crossed sitting, sitting in a car welding way worse in the crotch. Yeah. Uh, so it sounds like both of y'all uh, have some experience in that area. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want to be sitting with my legs crossed and catching on fire. No, no. <laughs> oh, some time ago now, VW nut 1967 said, please reach over, please reach over and smash the thumbs up. So thanks for that. Uh, VW nut 1967. We appreciate uh, the support, mm -hmm. kind of the call out there. Um, uh, Carmad92 in the UK uh, says that his 69 was a swing axle. I, I can't say that I knew that, but it doesn't surprise me because there was, you know, those were some 67 through 69 especially were really transitional years for uh, the most popular VWs out there. So that's that's interesting for sure. Uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to say, I was you're going to say, I was going to try to say his name, but Zoo Zoo hates. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry, I, I miss Mr. Bilbao, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Miss Bilbao. <laughs> sorry, we're butchering your name. That's a that's a an awful thing to get wrong, but oh, <laughs> uh, you said first, first VW was a 1303S, bought it. Uh, with your first work paycheck. Well, that's that's pretty cool. That's moving on in the world, right? When you, you get your first paycheck and you get to, to buy your first car, that's that's pretty sweet. It's pretty cool that you made it uh, what was probably a really solid choice and, and got that 1303. Um, yeah, uh, very, uh, very cool. I think I think we got it close because he gave us the... <laughs> but he laughing. he's laughing. He's laughing. <laughs> So yeah, thanks. Thanks for your patience with us. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could open up a mic for you so you could school us. <laughs> yeah. I have trouble with regular names like John. <laughs> Jahan. <What's up? laughs> Jahan. <laughs> that what That's how it's spelled, right? <laughs> I I my biggest uh, screw up, other than the one that just happened. <laughs> <laughs> with a name i don't know i obviously was not thinking or my mind was elsewhere i was actually reading a roster and um i i thought i was getting it and and i said schlow the girl's name was schlow c-h-l-o-e <laughs> and oh. she could not have been more dissatisfied with my pronunciation of her name which was of course actually chloe <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she ever gave forgave me. <laughs> that was probably the worst I've ever done. My wife's a teacher, so she we get to hear all kinds of different names, and I'm not going to even go into it because there's some that I probably shouldn't even say, but you just wouldn't believe people would name their kids what they do. Crazy. 
The world is full of interesting choices. <laughs> uh, MK5 CNY says, just wanted to say my wife and I really enjoyed uh, enjoy your voice. Oh, wow. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Man. He's the Tom Bodette of the Volkswagen uh, Fabrication <laughs> Garage Series. I think we said the tagline was going to be, um, I'm Brent with Haptic Garage and I'll leave the shop light on for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, thanks for the the kudos there, MK5CNY. I, I appreciate that. Um, it's it's always good to to get your comments on the videos, and I'm glad you were able to join us uh, today too. This is awesome. Uh, he says his start with VWs was not so good. A '69 Fasty never got it to run. Traded for it. You know, my parents had uh, a fastback. They had a '67 Beetle. Uh, somebody <laughs> rear-ended them, and they replaced it with a Fasty, and in its time, they weren't as satisfied with that as they were with the Beetle. They loved the the Beetle. Um, sorry you didn't get to to get that one running. These days, I think they're super cool. <laughs> but yeah, so some of our first VW stories are like that too, right? We just we we keep on going. But thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. I've been wanting a square back lately. Yeah, I don't know why. There's a guy. Um, working on a square back uh called dream wrench that's his channel name i think he's out in california um but he has some pretty cool videos that he's posting about about the work he's doing on his square back uh, last thing he did was primering some parts which was a pretty informative yeah square backs are pretty awesome Looking uh, <laughs> my brother just chimed in and said he was hoping that I'd talk about dad's beetle. Okay, uh, <laughs> should I tell the story? <laughs> Uh-oh, uh-oh. So here we go. <laughs> oh, my, my parents recognized that um, my brother loved the beetle too. He was an infant at the time. And that if he was uh, fussy and it was bedtime, that he would he would go to sleep, but they'd take him for a short ride in the VW and it, it worked like a charm. So that kind of became the thing to do. Uh, and then they realized that the beetle had an exhaust leak <laughs> and that might've been contributing to his slumber <laughs> and they quickly discontinued the practice. But <laughs> yeah, there's, that's a family story involving a, a VW that uh, gets told every now and then in our, in our circle. Yeah, my bay window had, um, it had the heater still hooked up. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it was fully, you know, it wasn't solid. So we got a little bit of exhaust coming in through the heater channels into the cab. And uh, I do remember getting a little tired driving that thing. Yep. Yep. I bet that would would have its effect. <laughs> the whole night yeah. fumes thing. Yeah, not, not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do we have any more first V-Dub uh, stories? Here's something from V-Dub Den. He says uh, he loves the Type 3s. His latest is a 73 square back, four-speed fuel injected that he traded for. It's in terrific condition, runs and drives great, lots of fun. Uh, you're going to make MK5CNY a little jealous, V-Dub Den, <laughs> but that sounds mm -hmm. great, man. I knew somebody in high school that had a square back. She was the type that every choice she made was just a little different. Uh, really cool person. Uh, and so that was the only one in the parking lot was was her VW square back. I think a lot of us had never seen such a thing when she showed up in, in that car. I just have a vision of making, you know, I'm an off-road guy. So I just want to make one with, you know, big tires and maybe, maybe four-wheel drive. I don't know. Someday. I've seen something like that. Oh, um, boy, it's been a long time now. They had basically made it a convertible, uh, a square back, and put big tires on it, and there was some diamond plate involved, and it was a, it was an interesting build. Well, that, there was that bug, uh, at Bug Jam, that square back that was, it sounded like it had a pretty mean motor in it. That's right. That's I remember that one. That one's been there for, uh, a couple of, of years now. It keeps coming back, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, there was a mean square back doing some off-roading at Bug Jam. 
Uh, MK, 5C, and Y asked, do either of you think the formula of fixing VWs on YouTube is a good replacement for the old guy we relied on 20 years ago? Um, they are beyond rare, and I only have one I know now. Uh, I would say both of those things together would be the ultimate. Right? If yeah. You can find that you know old school mechanic that maybe takes early retirement <laughs> from wrenching on customers' vehicles and starts doing it to produce YouTube content. That would be cool, but what a unique combination of talents that would require. Um, so I'll answer it this way. Um, of course, you know, Rob and I are both uh, examples of YouTubers that are, you know, sharing a lot of this stuff ourselves. Those are the guys that I look to. Those are the guys that I want the information from are the ones who have been working on them forever and are willing to share a little bit of, of their thought process on, on how they approach stuff. Um, there's a writer, he's passed away. It's been 10 years now, but a guy named Bob Hoover, if you haven't heard of him, if you can dig up any of the stuff that he wrote, that's about as close as I get to the, the person that you just described. Um, and they're, they're an invaluable resource while we have them. And yeah, any exposure you can get to soak up what you can and Pass it on if you can is definitely a good thing. Yeah, I try to every single day learn something new. I don't care who who it is. It could be someone younger than me or whatever. It doesn't they don't have to be older to be knowledgeable? If you just have an open mind and and listen, you can mm -hmm. sometimes pick up some really cool stuff that you you know. Sometimes you think you know it all, but you really don't. <laughs> yep. You know. So yeah, I, I try to follow and listen to any, anything I can just to, to soak it all in. Yeah. You hear everyone out and you act on what you understand. Yeah. Sometimes you deal with people who just don't want to hear any of your suggestions or, you know, they want to do it their way and that's it. And then they may do a fine job of what they do, but they're not always right. No one is. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm okay with that because I'm that person. Sometimes there's some things that I'm totally confident about, but, the, the mark of good information for me is the person who can explain it. Not, and I don't mean works for me, right? Or I've been doing it that way for 20 years. That means they perceive it to have worked for 20 years, but that, <laughs> that doesn't mm -hmm. mean it did work for 20 years. Um, yep. So if they can explain the, the why or something about like back up, basically share how they concluded um, what, what the information is. That's, that's a pretty good sign that you might have something. Uh, worth hanging on to there. There's a lot that gets repeated, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, ex excellent question. That's one of those deeper philosophical questions, and I could I could eat that stuff up all day. Uh, v Dub Den says he started wrenching on the John Muir book in the late seventies, back when that book was probably flying off the shelf. <laughs> so here's one of our old school experts. <laughs> yep rob i'm having a great time but did you notice that we've been at this for over an hour has it been over an hour yeah it's, it's was, all these people joining us here that being so cool in the chat and sticking with I was, us i was hoping we'd go 20 minutes yeah well i think <laughs> we did it <laughs> well yeah i i think we'll do it again yeah yeah i'd like uh, to try this again if anybody's still hanging around in the chat, they can, if they want to throw any suggestions of what they'd like to hear or see in the next, next one, which will probably be in a couple of weeks. Cause you got to go out of town next week. Yeah. Any, any suggestions like what Rob said of what's working, what's not working, what you'd like to hear from us. Um, we're open to, to consider any of that. We're just actually, we're just thrilled that some, some folks showed up today. Y'all are awesome. We knew that going into it, but, uh, you keep proving it over and over again. So thanks for, for coming in and supporting us uh, today and being a part of this first live stream. I think I could get used to this stuff. It's fun. Yeah. Once we get these bugs worked out, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot going on behind all this stuff in front of me. It's like <laughs> when we get that figured out and kind of get the ball rolling so we're comfortable with it, I think we'll be fine. And the dogs would quit barking. And <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you could hear the dogs, but. That's awesome. Your dog barked before mine did. I thought thought for sure Tig would be barking at some point. Yeah, it was 
I was wondering if, if we could make it the whole way. Guess not. Uh, uh, V-Dub Den says, time flies when you're having fun. Absolutely. And uh, Barry says, do it again. And MK5CNY says, thank you, gents. Just need to get back to some uh, VW GTGs. Help me out on GTGs. Good to go? <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah. Oh, well. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what GTGs is. <laughs> Uh, what I what, what I would like to do in future ones is possibly bring in a guest from the chat if you know mm -hmm. if they got a, if even they could even have just a a cell phone and uh, we could bring him in and do a little talk It'd be kind of cool yeah there's cool. there's some technology for that too um, I was messing with one of them that you could like Skype someone in I don't know that that works with restream but. There's there's ways to do stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. as evidenced by everyone else who's doing it. <laughs> but, yeah, that would definitely be cool to have. Well, we got to hear from Ryan at some point. That guy is just a monster. Um, he uh, he is uh, in Tampa today at a car show. So oh, very cool. I see V Dub Dan has got a super chat. All right, yeah, we need I a package. Uh, yeah, VW V Dub Dan. That's really awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Uh, I wasn't expecting that to happen, to be honest, but <laughs> very, very cool. We appreciate it. Uh, Robert was asking, um, it, he said he wants to know a little bit about uh, background. So I'll, I'll try and summarize and Rob, you can, you can chime in uh, if you want. Um, it's not in this. This has always been the, the hobby. Uh, my, like my career is fairly far removed from from all of this uh, so I really have to get this fix <laughs> to go out into the garage I'm I'm pretty solidly in the hobby category but the way that I got to this point was I was the Lego kid I was the one that would get up early in the morning and and play with Legos as everyone else in the house was waking up and hours after they started their day I would have completed something and that never stopped. The materials changed. You know, it became coaster go karts. It became. I made a moped out of uh, out of scaffolding. Just a fright to see this thing, but <laughs> just couldn't stop tinkering with stuff and making things that rolled. Thing, especially things that I could put an engine on and and drive. Uh, and VWs. Wow, you know, there's a lot of old cars that really fit uh, someone with those kinds of interests, but. VWs really do a good job of feeding that need to tinker with a really cool, relatively simple, and well-proven design. Um, it makes it a lot easier to justify involvement in a hobby like this when you can actually use the thing, and it can be a, a practical source of, of transportation if you're immersed in it, right? Um, so yeah, I was the kid that liked to do this kind of stuff, and I just never, ever stopped. That's really where I like to, to spend my time is in the shop as if I was still playing with Legos uh, when I was just a little kid. Yep, yep. See, uh, VW Jawbreaker's in the house over here on our side. So, yeah, very cool. Hey, Gary, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> maybe we'll bring Gary on next week. So. Uh, Gary would be an awesome guest if he if he would subject himself to to such a thing. I don't, he's so tall, though. I don't know if he'll fit on the screen. I mean, he might, hey. I don't know. <laughs> he's a tall guy. Yeah, there's a lot of people that we can reach out to uh, to maybe drag in to, to mm -hmm. this mess. So yeah, we'll do our homework. We'll 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 do our our due diligence and our end of it. If you if you feel like you're crazy enough to be a part of this, reach out to one of us and we'll we'll uh, see if we can put something together. Yeah, yeah, but it'd be even better if we could do like a test call ahead of time just to make sure everything's working on their end. So we almost didn't make it today. So testing is good. Yeah, uh, uh, there's a, been a problem on my my end. I see. We'll figure that out. So yeah, yeah. and Robert, for for my background, I mean, basically, I, I, I've always been around cars. We, you know, as a kid, we had a service station, a gas station. When the back in the old days, when you could pull up and they would wash your windows and stuff. I mean, not like the '50s, but in the '70s when I was little, I mean, we still would pump gas, you know, for for people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just remember being a little kid and I'd always take the jack and stand on it and pump it and raise, you know, kid stuff. But I've always been around cars um, and growing up in Detroit. You're kind of it's it's a thing. It's a big thing there. Um, 
and then you know moved to florida and just kind of stayed in the hobby and got those volkswagens and uh, got into off-road racing rock crawling and stuff and that kind of turned into me getting into the tv side of things that where i worked on some how-to tv shows for cars and did that for about eight or ten years and uh that went away and kind of said well just try some youtube so here we are <laughs> also have quite a bit of experience in fabrication right what's that you also have quite a bit of experience in fabrication and being a car builder or did i did i miss that part no yeah um i've been i'm trying to think of how long i've been even just like welding and stuff i can tell you how i learned to weld when i built my first rock crawler you know i was i had my own jeep shop i did i built jeeps and i we sold jeep parts and you know lifted jeeps and all that stuff so i built my uh i had a you know jeeps regular jeeps but then i wanted to do a competition racing and rock crawling and all that so i had to build that and i had a little bit of experience with building roll cages and stuff but not much so you know i bent up all the tube and got pretty good at that and i had never welded in my life at that point so a buddy of mine had one of those big giant miller on a trailer diesel engine welder stick welder that'd be intimidating it, yeah it was in his barn it was loud and he let me build this thing in his barn because i couldn't do it at the shop i didn't have room and uh I'd fire that welder up at like eight, 10 at night sometimes. And I just like, Oh gosh, going to wake the whole neighborhood up. But I started tacking everything together with a stick welder, you know, and I still didn't know what I was doing, but I got it all tacked together because my other buddy said he would weld it for me. Well, when it came time to weld it, he never had time. So he let me use his welder. And I basically learned to weld on that roll cage, which was tested several times. I rolled that Jeep probably five, six times. <laughs> <laughs> so. that's that's pretty impressive really not that you rolled it five times but that it survived all of that especially for yeah. a welder that's pretty cool that's like natural stuff right yeah you know i've i've watched a lot and just you know i, I try to like i said soak it all in and, and learn so i just kind of watched and figured it out you know practiced mm -hmm. on some scrap stuff you know sure but now I've come a long way since then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I messed around with welding for a while and I didn't realize it, but it was all in very comfortable position. It was stuff I could put on a welding table. And then I wanted to build a car trailer and I, I went crazy with this thing. And that's when I learned how to weld out of position. So if you got underneath this thing and looked at all the different welds, you'd see where I didn't quite have the hang of it yet. <laughs> ugly welds that were holding to where I pretty much learned how to weld vertical and upside down and all of it's, that stuff. It's hard. It's hard. Still it is, hard. But, you know, a project puts you there where you, you have to figure it out like that roll cage. Did you ever notice that your best welds are the welds that no one will ever see? <laughs> to this day, I can lay yeah. down. I yeah, can lay down a weld that. that. <laughs> I could lay down a weld that Ryan would be jealous of, and it'll be like underneath of a freaking glove box or something that nobody will ever see. <laughs> it's like, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see that happening. <laughs> Every time. Yeah, when I was doing that some welding on that Bronco, there's a couple pieces that were just kind of like eye candy that are underneath. Uh, and it was all, I did all TIG welding. I wish I had... If I was prepared for that, I'd show a picture. But uh, it had to be perfect, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was welding basically thin metal to like a thicker metal. Mm -hmm. But there, to do something like that, I basically had to say, okay, get me out a couple pieces and test and see how I'm feeling. Because you won't weld one day as good as you do the next day or the other yeah, way around. Yeah. So I had to make sure I'm having a good day, feeling good and then knock out all those welds it's interesting yeah it's it's one of those lifelong skills it's a 
uh, when I was at Marcy Junebugs, I mean, that's uh, we were talking a little bit about that. You know, if I couldn't imagine not being able to weld because it has saved me so much time and money being able to do it myself. You know, I do mm -hmm. a lot of people bring me stuff all the time to like extract a bolt out, and I yeah. do it with a welder. And it's it's you, a tough one. Uh, I I still say this about welding is that more than anything else I do in the shop or any other tool or process or whatever, welding makes me feel like if I can think of it, I can do it. I mean, that's not always true, but it makes me feel that way. <laughs> it's the most yeah. empowering ability that I've come across in the stuff that I get into uh, in the shop. There's other mm -hmm. tools that are more interesting maybe like a lathe is this big mysterious beast to me that i'd love to know more than i do um but man welding is the one that it's so great to get into a huge project or just oh i need to attack this and five minutes in and out and you're done with your welder but you just it just becomes a part of your workflow and that's just an option just like grabbing a socket wrench or a, a combo wrench yeah, there's a lot of times when I'm working on something and I'm ripping something apart or whatever it is. And, and if you didn't, if I didn't know how to weld, I wouldn't do what I'm doing because I'm in my head. I'm like, well, whatever I take apart, I know I can put back together, you know, whether I have to rebuild it and weld it together or whatever I got to do. I know I can fix it. Mm -hmm. and you don't have that freedom when you can't weld. That's true. So, if anybody's out there who's not a welder yet, get a welder yeah. and learn. <laughs> but here's the tough part is it's not just the welder. Like I would say invest in the good one. Mm -hmm. If you don't think you can afford, you'll you'll be glad you did. But pretty much double that price, maybe not quite that bad, but there's a bit more that goes with a welder. There's the grinders and all the cutting tools and the little the tanks and the cart and spare parts and so it's this whole thing that you kind of have to dive into to really be prepared to use a welder to its fullest capability. Um, but man, once you're there, it's it's like Rob and I have been going on about. Yeah, certainly get the grinder because you will learn to grind very well as well when you first start <laughs> welding. I've said yeah. that a million times. Yeah, I'm a very good grinder first. <laughs> Grinding teaches you how to weld. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, because you don't want to grind anymore. <laughs> there's there's some um, conversation in the chat here, which is awesome to see people chatting back and forth. That's pretty cool. But it's about shows in Florida. Um, the question in particular is, where's the most concentrated VW scene? I would go with I-4 corridor. So that's basically uh, from Tampa to Orlando to Daytona. Uh, our friends up in the Jacksonville, Amelia Island area would probably have something to say about that. Uh, Dune Buggy Brothers, they're up in that area. So. And there's some pretty cool stuff going on in Miami. Um, there's probably at least three regions we could identify. But the stuff that I'm close to is, is Central Florida. So I, that'd be my answer. That Dune Buggy Brothers show, um, of course, he had to do it. I think it was July. And I went up there. And, man, it was hot. But yeah. such a great location. You're actually right on the beach. You know, it's like a little campground. So if you have an RV, you can come get a hookup. Camp oh, right there. It's great. Yeah. He's supposed to do it a little earlier this year, which would be great. But I'm bringing my RV. A fair warning. I'm about to lose video here. No biggie. I can change the battery. But if I disappear for a second, I'll, I'll be back. Well, are we, are we to a point where we should just kind of... Go away. <laughs> I'm fine with, with winding it down. We don't want to overstay our welcome here. So, um, it, yeah, if, if, if we're going to go ahead and, and uh, call it for the day, I just want to reiterate how appreciative I am of both of our audiences, everybody showing up today. But, you know, what you do all the other times when we're posting videos, it's really cool mm -hmm. uh, to, to hang out with you all, even if it's, you know, digitally through YouTube and stuff. It's We love the support. It's It's pretty cool. And it's cool to hang out with you, too. Yeah, that's going to be the best part is getting to know all these people in the chat and uh, making that community. Mm -hmm. what I'm looking forward to. So, so I, I didn't know VW Dan, VW Den till today. Yeah, I mean, there you go. I didn't really. <laughs> now his now that name will stick in my head. 
Yeah, I can see his. I think I see his square back in the avatar there. Yeah, it's, I just was looking at that. That's what. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All so right. Yeah, let's, let's wind it down, and we'll be back in a couple weeks. Hopefully, we can get this tech stuff down, and uh, we'll we'll bring in some guests as well. We know we're going to bring in some other YouTubers, and mm -hmm. probably some regular TV guys who you should know. And yeah, uh, exciting stuff. Yeah. And we're going to get rent a, a battery charger that'll keep up. Yeah, I've got one. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> I lost my video. Should still have uh, audio, but yeah, I've got the, the little DC adapter thing, but it doesn't work with my camera. Okay. Well, yeah, that's on me. I'll have to figure that out. That's a good length of a show then. And we will <laughs> see you in a. <laughs> we'll see you in a couple weeks. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thank you.